Now, ladies and gentlemen, the moment you've been waiting for, the one, the only, the Landers AL6 Mark II. That's right, I'm finishing this bad boy today, so let's get rolling. And I start with something I've never actually made before, the pressure plate. This is a spring-loaded plate that keeps the film flat against the film plane. In the past, I've just dug this out of old cameras, but I thought it's time to man up and make one myself. I mean, how hard can it be? First, I have to make a leaf spring. To do that, I'm using this old saw. I use some tin snips to cut a long strip. And then, on the mill, I square it up. It doesn't have to be perfect, so I'm just eyeballing it. Now it comes time for the plate itself. I'm using a fairly thin sheet of brass that I cut with jeweler's saw, and then on the mill I cut a half inch hole right in the middle that will be used to see the frame number through. In order to bend the steel, I applied just a little bit of heat to anneal the metal. It's very thin, so just about a second under this torch is more than enough. I just eyeball the shape for the first one, and then use it as a template to create the second one. As you can see, it retains quite a bit of its springiness. When it comes time to attach the spring to the plate, my first thought was brazing, but the mere touch of the torch to the plate, and it starts warping, and... That can't happen because it has to be as flat as possible, so I threw any heat-related process out the window. Then I thought about riveting, but I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to get the rivets flat enough, so I threw that out as well. So I decided to cheat and just use epoxy. And yes, I know, I know, I know there's probably a better way of doing this, and if you have an idea, leave it in the comments. But for now, I'm going to try this and see how it works. And there's the final product. It looks pretty good, it has a good amount of springiness, and the pressure it exerts feels pretty similar to other spring backs I've used in the past. The front of the plate has been sanded on a glass sanding block to make sure it's as flat as possible. So to try and cut down on the amount of light that's reflecting around the inside of the camera, I decided to use some fancy chemicals I bought off the internet to try and turn it black. Up next, I make the parts that give the film spools a place to sit. I start with an M3 cap screw that I foul the head over on. I'm just eyeballing it and checking it against a roll of film. I'm looking for a fairly loose fit on the film spool. I make four of these. With two of them, I carefully foul a slot right down the middle. And once I hit the bottom, I cut out a little piece of brass and hammer it into the groove. I file it a bit till it looks symmetrical, and the wings are short enough to fit into the film spool. Next, I quickly turn down two short little pieces of aluminum that I drill and tap with a M3 thread. I make two of these. Next, I attach the super glue arbor to turn down the brass film seats. I start with a square that I cut off a thick brass sheet. I first turn down the sides until I get a disc just larger than the roll of film.
I mark the boundaries of the features I won't cut into the front, and I use a forward-facing cutting tool to make the profile. I'm going to have to make four of these, so I'm going to be here for a while. Now it's time to figure out how to attach the top cap. If you take a look at the last camera I made, you'll see that there's a felt gap here. That serves two purposes. It was a design choice to hide the difference between the two bulks of aluminum and to create a visual feature. It also soaks up light and prevents it from leaking in from various points. And I'm going to do the exact same thing on this camera. I start by making these threaded standoffs that I'm going to add to the top cap. And those standoffs will be made of aluminum. Definitely not the ideal material for this situation, but I don't want there to be a material difference, so I'm gonna go ahead and go with it. I make four of these little threaded posts. I next super glue the top cap onto the body and drill four holes. I separate the two and drizzle some Loctite in those holes and hammer the studs in. After this, the studs will be trimmed flush and polished. They should become almost invisible. The bottom sides have threads, so when the time comes, I'll be able to drop it onto the body and put bolts on the backside to securely hold it in place. Now comes a part that I've kind of been dreading, welding the film plane in. This is going to be a little bit difficult because this part has to be perfect. If it's off by just a little bit, even just a few thousandths of an inch, the final image won't be perfectly in focus. Before I even start welding, I use a surface gauge to set the height properly. And between each tack, I check to make sure nothing has moved. At one point, one of the sides came up slightly, but I was able to tap it back into place. And woo, what a relief this is over. I was really worried about it, but it worked pretty darn well. As you can see, I only did the four corners, and honestly, I don't see a reason to do any more than that. The more I weld on this part, the more opportunity it has to come out a square, so I think this is good enough. I'm gonna stop right here. Now, up until now, you might have wondered how the hell I plan to keep this back door shut. I mean, I made the door, but I haven't shown you any sort of locking mechanism or anything like that. Well, wonder no longer, because the answer is magnets. Yes, magnets. You may think they're no good and the door will come open and ruin all my film, but I've been using this design for three years now, and never once has the back door come open unless I wanted it to come open. And I think it's pretty cool to be able to just pop the back door open without fumbling with any sort of lock or have any visible latching mechanisms. So there'll be three magnets on the back door and the three magnets that you see here. To get them all lined up, I'm using this 3D printed jig I designed. And to hold them into place, just a single drop of super glue on each magnet does the trick.
And now it's time to get this thing painted. Just plain old Rust-Oleum with a matte finish. Gotta make sure to get all them corners. In the previous video, I made this little slider, and I thought it would look really cool if it were black. But I'm afraid paint would rub off too easily. So, what I did is I got another one of these fancy blue bottles off the internet that's supposed to turn aluminum black. This is my first time using it, and I wasn't really sure what to expect. Initially, the results were really nice, but the black finish rubbed off almost instantly. I don't know if it's something I did, or if it's just the nature of the product. So I ended up not using it, and I'm going to figure something else out. I want to anodize, but right now I don't have the equipment. To cut down on light leaks, the back door is completely covered in felt, as well as most of the inside. This felt has an adhesive back, so I can stick it right onto the aluminum. I cut out a section that's a little bit bigger than the back door, and mark where the magnets are. I cut little cross patterns where the magnets are so that I can push them through the felt. And then carefully with a very sharp knife, I cut around the edge till all the excess felt is removed. Here's another part that I made last week that I've painted black. I screw it on and then use it as a template to cut the felt out. I carefully remove the felt and peel the adhesive residue off. Inside the slider housing, I add some more felt that will cushion the slider. While not shown here, I also put in some red film that will reduce the amount of light that will come into the camera through this hole. At this point, it's safe to permanently attach the hinge. I do so with some 332nd inch welding rod. I give myself quite a bit of extra felt that I can use to wrap around the inside of the body up to the top of the film plank. I use a sharp knife to cut right along the edge of the film plane, and then carterize the edge with a lighter that burns away all the loose hairs. The other end of the welding wire is cut, and then off camera I rivet the ends. The door now works smoothly, and the magnets are holding just fine. This is the tripod mount that I made several weeks ago that I painted black to match the inside of my soul. I mean, camera. The inside of my camera. Next, I start assembling the film advanced parts. The two top parts consist of those big aluminum knobs, a shaft, the brass film seats, and those two little winged bolts I made. To make sure they don't come apart while I'm winding the film, I smear everything with a good amount of Loctite. I also add a spring to keep the pressure down on the film spool. And before you ask, yep, I made them, and nope, I'm not going to show you the process. To be honest, uh, they, I don't think they turned out very well. They work, but they don't look good. So if you want to learn, go talk to this old Tony. He's much better at this sort of thing than I am. On the bottom of the camera, I used those two little pieces of aluminum I threaded some holes in, the last two film seats, and the other two screws that I did not put that little brass wing into.
Now back to the top cap. Off camera I smoothed the top of those posts and add some felt onto the bottom. At this point I would normally install the rangefinder, but it kind of went missing. I looked high and low for it, I'm sure it'll turn up eventually, but for now I'm just going to use some of this play-doh as a placeholder. On the inside of the camera, I just add four nuts to those four posts, and the top cap is now securely held in place. Next, I install the camera strap mounts, which is the easiest part of this whole build. And now the camera is completed. Well, ah, there we go. The lens still needs to be calibrated, but to do that I have to go outside. And as you can probably guess, I haven't been out of this basement for a few months now. But it's almost warm enough to put on some real pants and consider going outside. Oh, I also need to clip a camera strap onto it. Whew, the Landers AL6 is finally done. What a journey it's been. I've learned how to weld. I played with caustic chemicals in a blue bottle. I made some springs, I casted aluminum, I did that thing where I put the things together with the hot and cold stuff. Uh, you know, the, uh, the thing, yeah. Oh, and I even found the rangefinder. You can see it in there, right there. So now it's time for me to go out and make some cool photos. If you like this camera, give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. If you think I messed up, leave a comment. And with that, I'll see you next time.